I'm Chef John Foles. Food is so much more than nutrition here in the South. Every weekend on Louisiana's Back Roads and Bayous, our festivals celebrate the food, music, and cultures that make us unique. Why not join me as we visit the fairs and festivals of our state and cook up another great taste of Louisiana. Funding for this program is provided by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Vieux Carré, Zydeco, Achafalaya, Natchitoches. In Louisiana, you'll say things you've never seen before. When riding down the highway in Louisiana, be careful. You never know what kind of creatures you'll encounter. The Bayou Lacombe Crab Festival, held on the last weekend in June each year on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain near Slidell, pays homage to the Louisiana blue crab. Considered by many to be the tastiest and certainly the most aggressive of all crab species in the world. Each year, thousands of visitors converge on this small village of Lacombe to experience a delicacy that is really hard to beat. Here, the blue crab and shrimp are poured into a pot of highly seasoned boiling water in the true Louisiana fashion. This results in a flavor that is unique to Cajun country Louisiana. The shrimp and crab are cooked for less than 10 minutes, then allowed to soak in the boiling liquid until perfectly seasoned and ready for the table. Once ready, of course, they're poured out for eating, or you can just pick up a few wraps and ready to take home for the rest of the family. Naturally, there are many foods available at this weekend festival in Lacombe, but none creating more excitement than the fried soft-shell crab pullboy. Crabs, like most crustaceans, must molt during their life cycle. At this time, the hard shell is discarded, and when the crab emerges with its new butter-soft shell, it's perfect for eating whole. The crabs are then cleaned thoroughly and breaded in a well-seasoned yellow corn flour for deep frying. On this weekend, well over 2,000 people will purchase the crabs on the now famous Lacombe Crab Festival Pobar Sandwich. Here, the men representing one of the many civic or professional clubs renting booth space at the fair will fry the crabs in a special homemade deep fryer. The vat is filled with vegetable oil and heated to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Then the crabs are lowered into the hot oil for frying. It only takes about five to six minutes to cook the crabs to a crisp golden brown. Load after load of these crabs are lowered into the fryers and turned often as the crowds continue to mount for this one-of-a-kind treat. Once they're perfectly fried to golden perfection, the men remove them from the hot oil and the crabs are drained of all of that excess fat and now they're ready for the sandwich. A true Louisiana po' boy sandwich is made with an eight to 10 inch loaf of crusty Louisiana French bread. It is fully dressed with lettuce, tomatoes, and tartar sauce. Then of course, the soft shell crab is added right at the end. If you think you might not like our crab po' bars, well don't fret, there's much other food available here, including everything from simple crab cakes to one of my favorites, the crab and crawfish pasta. This rich red Italian sauce is Definitely Italian in origin, but I tell you, Creole in flavor. And we'll even come back and add a little bit of your favorite cheese on top, like a little bit Parmesan or Romano. What a finish. For those wishing to experience the more exotic flavor of Louisiana, how about fried alligator on a stick? Hey, let me tell you, it's good. You should try it. And for those who just want the traditional flavor, well, there's gumbo, there's jambalaya, again, flavored with those wonderful lumps of jumbo crab. And these 100-year-old oak trees are the perfect spot for putting a sandwich together or just sitting down and consuming one of those great pobars. The fairway includes rides for the kids and is the ideal place to meet friends and enjoy the festival activity. So go ahead, mark your calendars for the last weekend in June and plan to get away for a great Louisiana experience, the Bayou Lacombe Fire Festival. 
It was the American statesman back at the turn of the century who said there are three species on the planet that, well, when they're coming, they seem to be going, and when they're going, they seem to be coming. He said one was a politician, the second was a crab, and the third was his wife. Well, I don't know if he was too much of a diplomat. He may have been a statesman. I agree with him, though, on the politician and the crab. And I'm really excited today to be in the kitchen for two reasons. First of all, because I'm cooking the foods of the Lacombe Crab Festival. And of course, I love crab. It gives us such versatility in the kitchen. And of course, one of the premier meats or seafoods of South Louisiana. And then, because I have a great friend, Cultus Pearson, who knows a lot about crabs. Fact is, he's lived out on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain, where some of the best crabs come from. And he's been involved in the industry for a long time. And he's going to come to the kitchen to talk to us a little bit about soft shell crabs, one of the real delicacies in Louisiana. But first, before we do any of that, you have to look at this gorgeous crab platter I have here. This platter is about, what, 24 inches across, and this crab handles on it is fantastic. But look at the foods here. This is all the different types of crab meats available to us. This is the crab claws or crab fingers from the blue crab. This is the jumbo lump crab meat. I call this the pearls of Bayou Country because that's about what they're worth. Really, really expensive meat. This is some of my favorite here. This is the claw crab meat of Louisiana. Really, really nice and flavorful. And there's an old saying, the nearer the bone, the sweeter the meat. And I think that's why I like this one so much. Here we have some back fin crab meat. It's white meat and it's kind of pulled from all of the chambers. I have a soft shell here, and this is what Cultus is going to come and talk to us about. This is the butter soft crab. In fact, he brought these uh, to my kitchen today. These are some tiny versions of the same crab. Look, this one's still moving. And then, of course, the boil crab and the Dungeness crab from my good buddies out on the West Coast. So these are really great. Uh, uh, just think of the, the, the variety of crab meats we have to work with. No wonder we can make so many great dishes like gumbos and etouffees, and that's what I want to cook for you today. The first dish <clears throat> is my really good crab meat, twin crab meat uh, etouffees. And etouffee comes from that French word to smother. Anytime we put something in a pot and smother it with a lot of other vegetables like onion, celery, bell pepper, you know the traditional flavors of Louisiana, you're going to get an etouffee or a smothered dish. So we begin with the trinity as we call it, onions, celery, bell pepper, and put whatever colored bell peppers you like in here. I, I, I like a lot of colors, you know that. So I'm always putting a little red, a little gold, and a little orange there. A little more expensive, but the colored peppers really don't change the flavor of the dish at all. I'm going to stir all of those around in my buttery flavored oil. This is a buttery flavored oil. You can buy different types of that oil in the store. You just have to ask around for it a little bit. And now I'm going to add my favorite spice of all, my favorite vegetable seasoning of all, garlic. And I like to put a lot in because, of course, the garlic will cook out of the dish as it steams out of the pot there. And once that's all in, then I'll put the first of my crab meats. I said this is a twin crab meat etouffee. I'm going to put the claw meat first. Remember I said the most flavorful, the one that will really give this dish a pronounced crab flavor. I'm going to put it down in here and kind of sacrifice it. In fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to sacrifice it to the flavor of this dish. It'll cook away as the etouffee or smothered crab meat cooks in the bottom of this black iron skillet. This is an old roasting, uh, this is an old skillet or fried chicken roasting pan, actually, uh, is what I make my etouffees in. Really nice pot for cooking. Once all of this sautés, I can add a little of the roux. Now, this is Creole in origin, the etouffee. So I'm going to sprinkle in a little roux. I won't begin with the brown roux as we would in Cajun cooking, equal parts of oil and flour cooked to a golden brown. In fact, here, the Creole version, I just kind of mix the flour in with the butter to pick up the excess oil so I don't have a lot of oil floating on, on the top of my sauce. And look how nice all of those colors are here. And once that's in, I'll have to add my fresh tomatoes. Remember, this is etouffee creole. You want to have some nice tomatoes. Uh, uh, etouffee is kind of pink in color, so you want to add a little tomato sauce, tomato puree, tomato, what? Uh, that really nice paste will be good. Just don't put quite as much. Uh, herbs, bay, uh, bay leaves. I'm going to put a nice fresh bay leaf in here. Thyme, basil. Use your own uh, uh, spices, whatever herbs and spices you like. That's what I want you to use in your etouffee. Now, once that's all in, let this saute for just a second, and then uh, stock. I'm going to add a shellfish stock here. You could use uh, chicken stock. You could use water. 
if you wanted to. This, uh, this is a sauce, it's a stew-like, so you want to make sure you have a stew consistency rather than a soup consistency. But look how nice the color of this dish is. Really, really nice color. Just let it all come together. And once it does, you want to then flavor it with your other uh, a typical flavor, salt, pepper, a little hot sauce, whatever you want. I uh, add just enough stock to get it to the consistency of a sauce. You don't want to make it too soupy. So I'll add now a touch of pepper. I'll come back with a little bit salt, a little bit hot sauce. Hot sauce gives it a really nice bite, but not too much. I don't like to put too much hot sauce, just the right amount. Look how it's getting nice and saucy here. And then I would add my jumbo lump crab. And I'm going to put a big handful. I want you to take a look at that jumbo lump crab as it goes down. Who wouldn't love this dish? Right down into the etouffee. And that other crab meat is sacrificed. I can add a little more stock. And then let it cook for just a couple of minutes. This doesn't take very long. And the etouffee can become a nice pasta sauce. Of course, you can do a lot of things with it. We serve it over rice. Naturally, all the time in Louisiana, we'll serve it over rice. But you could serve it as a pasta sauce. I want to give you a couple other ways that you can serve it as well. Let me get this big platter out of the way. And I'm going to serve it as I do for many of the holidays in Louisiana. You can finish it with a little sherry if you want to. I'm going to come in with uh, a ladle of it on top of crepes. Let's say these crepes are filled with a Florentine or a spinach or a Rockefeller or something like that. The crab meat etouffee is wonderful in that. And right inside of a little mini boucher or a patty shell as we call it. You can get them in the store and just bake them. It's going to be just fantastic. Look how nice that is. I'll clean this off on the cutting board and then garnish it with whatever colors you like. I'm going to put some of this purple cabbage and you can imagine all of the different ways to serve this fantastic etouffee, crab meat, twin crab meat etouffee from the Bayou Lacombe Crab Festival. Okay, the next dish that I want to do for you is definitely, definitely one of my favorite. In fact, it's a dish that people come from all over the country to eat, especially in New Orleans or Bayou Lacombe across the lake, and that's the soft shell crabs. And we fry them, we pan fry them, we saute them. But take a look at the uh, platter here, and you're going to see two soft shells. They're different colors. This one is kind of bluish gray. This one is brown, depending on the waters that they come from. To clean the soft shells, they're really butter soft. They molt about, oh, I don't know, 25 times or so in their lifetime. That's when the shell gets nice and soft. And we're going to talk about that with uh, cultists a little later. I'm going to pull the uh, uh, little uh, lungs or little feelers here out and just pull them out of the way. And then, of course, you can pull the mouth and the eyes right off of the front. They're real easy to clean. In fact, your seafood supplier will clean them for you. And once that's done, then that's it. They're ready for frying because the crabs are totally edible at this state. At this uh, point, I'm going to make my batter up. I'm going to start by whipping some eggs and milk in this bowl, just kind of whip it around a little bit. And once that's in, you can add some water to thin it out. I'm going to add some of that good New Orleans beer. Make a beer batter out of it. And um, the beer kind of gives it a real tangy flavor, a real nice flavor. But if you don't want beer, throw some water in there. Now, once that's in, I have my batters here. And you see the uh, flour, the yellow corn flour here on my platter as well as the flour. And I'm mixing the yellow corn flour and the flour with the peppers and the herbs, whatever herbs you want. I'm using basil and thyme and all of that again. And mix them all together. The yellow corn flour is really a twice ground corn meal and it's perfect for frying crabs, soft shell crabs or fish or anything else in Louisiana. Really, really a nice uh, flavor. Uh, there are about 4,000, I should tell you, 4,000 species of crabs in the world. 4,000. Can you imagine that? The smallest is the little pea crab. It's about the size of a green pea. The largest is the giant crab, the Japanese giant crab. It's about 12 feet from point to point, so imagine that. Now, you're going to put the crabs right into, I'm going to just do one for you because I think you can get the idea here. Just go ahead and batter it, get that nice yellow corn flour all over it, and especially right under the little wings here, the little shell where you saw me clean the um, lungs out. Just kind of pull that in, flavor it nicely. And then it's going to go into fat or oil at about 350 to 375 degrees. And I have my little fryer all set up, so I'm going to put it right down in there like that. And then I've got to get this batter off of my 
pans here. Use whatever uh, oil you like. I particularly like to use one of the vegetable oils. But if you want to use some type of fat or if you want to use some other type of fat, olive oil is too pronounced in flavor, I think. Peanut gives you the best frying, I think, longevity of the oil. Peanut is the best, but just any good vegetable oil. And you can also pan saute it if you want to cut the fats out of your diet. Just pan saute it in a little pan, just brown it or throw them in the oven. It's fantastic. So here, they're frying for just a minute. They're going to fry for about, oh, just a couple minutes, but they pop too. They really pop quickly. They'll throw that water right up in your face, so be careful. And I want to show you what those are going to look like here. Once I take them out of that, boy, I tell you, I love the flavor of soft shell crab. And I have a couple of them already done here on my platter. You can get a good look at those while I'm pulling this one out. And I would leave these fried just until they float. It doesn't really take long to fry them. Just uh, fry them until they float right out of the top of that pot. And then go ahead and flavor them with a little ramelade or one of those other nice flavors. Oh, boy, I, tell you, I could jump right into this platter right this minute. Really, really a nice dish. Wonderful dish from Lacombe, Louisiana. Now, I want you to look at a couple other dishes I discovered while I was out on the lakefront that day at the Crab Festival. First, I have a little bit of our, uh, this is a crab meat au gratin. Nice white sauce that's uh, filled with jumbo lump crab and then topped with cheddar cheese. Right next to it is the crab boulettes. And the boulettes are just kind of like crab cakes. Really, really nice and they're, uh, they're uh, full of the white crab as well as the lump crab. And then they're pan sauteed to a golden brown Really a wonderful, wonderful dish. And you can make a sandwich or a pull bar with it. All of these dishes are great using crab. And use your own imagination. Just absolutely fantastic. Well, I told you that my good buddy was coming into the kitchen, Coltus Pearson. And he knows a lot about crabs. And he taught me everything I know about soft shell crab. Hey, Coltus, there Hello, you are. John. How you doing? Doing fine. Man, I tell you, what do you have for me there? Well, I have a female crab here that I, I, I want to show you. You may know and you may not why crabs shed. They shed because that's the only way they grow. It's still is by, by shedding. And here I have the shell that this crab came from and I have the crab itself. So so this crab, this live crab came out of this shell right here. This is just an empty shell. Yeah, that's just an empty shell. And this this is a full grown female. Since the flap is oval, she won't she won't molt anymore. This is her this last is the, This is the last time. This is when she'll actually start to have her young crabs from this point well, on. Well, this, this is the one and only time that she mates is when she's in this soft crab in the state. Soft state right? For this last shed, her last molt. Boy, I tell you, well, that's interesting. You're right. I had never seen that before, but she's lively, too. Huh? I'm going yeah. to I'm gonna have to put it in the deep fryer a little, a little later. Well, how's the crabbing business, okay? Well, crabbing business is pretty good. Crabs are kind of scarce, but the price is up. Hey, well, look, so, so we do we do all right. I, I wish I could say that about the restaurant business. You know? <laughs> look, you and I were talking the last time I was at your house. We were talking about uh, marinated crab claws and crab fingers, and we had we fried some of these. But I want to make a really nice marinade, so I want you to help me out here for the crab fingers. Just stir up. I'm putting a little olive oil down in here. We're going to make a Rockefeller uh, marinade for these uh, crab claws. These have been steamed already. I'm gonna put the olive oil in, a little red wine vinegar, and you can just kind of whip that with my whip right there. I know your wife uh, lets you in the kitchen every now and then. A little hot sauce. This is a really, really nice uh, nice marinade. And of course, flavor it again with all the, the herbs that you wanna use. You don't have to use my flavors here. A little carrot, and what makes it Rockefeller is like the oysters Rockefeller. We have a little basil, thyme, and of course, a little bit tarragon. So whip all of that together, and I have to ask you, a question. I, we've talked so much about the, the years that you've been in the crabbing business, but how long have you actually been in there? Well, I started shedding crabs when I was about seven years old. My next door neighbor happened to be a, a, a commercial crab fisherman. My house was out over the water as his was. And he didn't know it, but I was watching everything he did. <laughs> Getting your lessons young. Huh? Yeah, just, just copying after him. Right. And he was a good teacher because he knew his business. Well, good. So you just kind of got from about seven years old, very young boy, you, start, you took very a Very young, to it. and I scooped these crabs off the lake shore, right. even under my house. 
<laughs> well, I tell you, I know you're one of the best, and I know a lot of people in the industry who come to get soft shell crabs from you. I, I've just put a little salt and pepper into this marinade. I would let this sit overnight to really develop the best flavor, but at this point, I could pour it over my crab fingers, and look how nice this is. Boy, these are ready to eat already, but if you let them sit in this marinade overnight or for a couple of hours, they're going to definitely be a little bit better. So we're going to eat some of those in just a couple of minutes or so, but have a seat right here and let's chat a little bit more about the crabbing business. I, um, I know that you uh, helped develop because the industry was a tough, soft shell crab was a tough industry and I know that you helped develop the first documented recirculating closed system for soft shell crab, didn't you? No, that's, that's correct. I, uh, I got really fed up with having to get up at 11 o'clock at night and go to the lake and, and if it was thunderstorms or the mosquitoes were thick, the winds blowing, the breakers coming in and it just really got to be a pain to have to go down there all the time and I was searching for a way to get it closer to my house so that e even my wife could help me. <laughs> That's in part, no? <laughs> yeah, she's, she's a good partner and, and no payroll. <laughs> Oh, you better not say that too loud. She may be listening. So, so you just, it's, it's, I saw it. It's kind of a box. It's about four by eight size box or so, and the crabs are, are held in that in a shed right at home. So you don't have to go out to the, to, the, uh, to the water every night in the middle of the night to harvest crabs. You do it right at home. Right? Yeah, it's a series of, of trays that size. That what, uh, how, how many times, I mentioned 24, is that about right, the, the number of times that shell go, that crab goes from a hard shell to a soft shell during its life? Well, it's actually somewhere around 20 times, about 20 times that they bolt. And, you, and you, you, men, you mentioned uh, also a minute ago about uh, the price. How, you know, se seven years old till 70, you, you mentioned that you were 70 years old last night. Uh, how uh, how has the price changed over the years in crab? I mean, I know what they cost me. Well, the the uh, the soft crabs have not increased as much as the hard crabs at that during that period of time. But the soft crabs, when I was young, coming up, on an average sold for about a dollar a dozen. But in order to get a dozen, the small crabs it took two to make one. Medium sized crabs it took three to make two. And if you had a big one like you had on that tray a while ago, then it just took one. And, and that was a dollar a dozen. And hard See, crabs was a dollar a bushel. Now, now I'm going to tell you, that jumbo crab that I use today, th that crab is $26 a dozen today. 20, so they were a little, a little more than $2 a piece, but they were a dollar a dozen back then. Huh? Yeah, a dollar a dozen. Gee, boy, I tell you what, things, things sure looking much better today, Carlos, than they were back then, right? <laughs> Yeah, except one thing, that dollar would buy a lot. Yeah, it'd buy a lot more. Yeah, buy a lot. Uh, why does New Orleans, New Orleans is so associated, and the great restaurants of New Orleans, so associated with soft shell crab. Why is that? Why do we love soft shell crab so much? You don't find that all over the country. No, it's a, because they, they started shedding crabs a long time ago on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain, and then the Regalies, and over at Lafitte. The rest of Louisiana, there was very little soft crab shedding going on. The big market was New Orleans. So uh, what about the number of people? Now, I, I know you were telling me that when you were young and just starting out in the business, there were a lot of people over the lake doing soft shell crab, but today there's a lot less. Huh? Yeah, there's a lot less. Uh, there's just, just not enough crabs to go around for everybody. Uh, we, we also, uh, uh, I was startled when you told me that uh, the number of fishermen out there bringing in bushel after bushel of crabs and getting them to the market. And today, today you need to set out twice as many traps, 1,200 traps where you used to set out 600 to catch the same number of crabs. Why the shortage? Well, actually, it just, it was a progressive thing. You could actually start off with about 100 traps when they first started using crab traps. But they, they kept increasing the number. The crabs kept dropping off, so it crept. It, uh, it started off at about 100, and that winds up till, till I fish 1,200 traps. 1,200. Do you think with everybody concerned about fats, and I, and I mentioned the different types of oil that you fry in, uh, do you think that so many people saying, hey, I don't want anything deep fried, uh, you know, uh, uh, serve it without the sauce, do you think that's going to hurt the soft shell crab industry, especially since we like them deep fried? No, because I think every, everybody occasionally is going to let the hair down 
and kind of kick the diet out the window <laughs> and have a soft shell crab. Well, I tell you, I sure hope they do because we sell a lot of those crabs at our restaurant. In fact, we can't get can't get them all the time. And uh, now that I know exactly that you have, uh, you told me that you kept some in the deep freeze. I'm going to come by and get get some when I'm running short. Thank you so much for stopping by and sharing all that great information with us. We appreciate it so much. And thank all of y'all for coming in and visiting the kitchen as we continue to cook up more of the taste of these fads and festivals and come back as we cook up more great taste of Louisiana. We're going to eat some crab claws here. <laughs> Funding for this program is provided by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Vieux Carré, Zydeco, Achafalaya, Natchitoches. In Louisiana, you'll say things you've never seen before. More information on events in Louisiana can be yours at no cost. Call 1-800-36-GUMBO for your free Louisiana tour guide, listing festivals, attractions, and points of interest throughout the Bayou State. Chef John Fulce's Louisiana Sampler, a companion cookbook to this series, contains the colorful history and culinary secrets behind Louisiana's most exciting festivals. For your copy, send a check or money order for $19.95 to Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Or use your credit card by calling toll-free 1-800-973-7246.